recording. We are recording. Okay. Let's see if. So what is up, Storm Chasers? Today, I really wanted to give you guys the whole video of Jamal Bryant apparently dragging Monique, dragging her husband, and pretty much dragging the woman that he was messing around with on Giselle. Uh, we're going to listen to... Lies! The lies! The lies! The lies! The lies! No, seriously, you're going to listen to <laughs> Jamal go in his little binder, the holy whore, the holy book of, of, of cheativity. Uh, so it's been a rough week, a long week, all for the good of the whole, the good of the community. You know who has been a rough week for? Giselle that got dragged. <laughs> Not only did she have to get dragged in person. I mean, we didn't even see all of the dragation. You know, Bravo edited out a lot of that shit because she is Andy's favorite. I don't know if y'all figured that out so far, but she is. That's why she always sitting right next to him, even though she brings nothing to the show. What does Giselle bring to the show besides green eyes and looking up uh, all up and through Robin's crack of her ass? And now that Robin got wine back looking through the crack of her ass, I don't know what Giselle is going to do. But anyway, it's been a rough week for Giselle. And we've all been making fun of Giselle. You've been okay, Pastor. You ain't your ties. Let me get along, Pastor. Good the people. Uh, let me say to you, I have been uh, delayed uh, trying to uh, honor the wishes of uh, Giselle who uh, asked me uh, not to respond, not to say anything. Uh, so for those of you who were overwhelmingly concerned uh, that I hadn't said anything, uh, had not given any defense, that's because I was honoring uh, what it is that uh, Giselle desired. Do y'all believe that? Do you believe the holy whore that Giselle did not want him to say anything to defend her? Even, I mean, mainly because she couldn't really say nothing to defend herself. I have never seen a cat having somebody's tongue as, as good as the cat had Giselle's tongue down there at the reunion. I'm just saying. I think she might have swallowed that mother sucker for a minute. That wrinkled neck got a little smooth. I was like, what's going on? What's happening? I don't believe the holy whore. What I believe is that Giselle said, please come and say something because I'm looking bad out here in these internet streets. Giselle is watching all this shit. Don't think that she ain't. Uh, because of mounting moments that have happened in social media, I thought it prudent. Uh, that I not remain silent so that my silence would not be confused with consent. Consent. Speaking of consent, silence, you know what you should have been remaining? Celibate. And we wouldn't have these issues today had you remained celibate. Monogamous. Fidelity. Let's talk about the words you should have remained. You ain't really done so good, you know. You know, you know what you do. Um, let me open by saying, those of you who know me, uh, I'm always a straight shooter. So as a consequence, you need to know. Apparently that nut is a straight shooter too. You got six or seven baby mamas. We know you a straight shooter. Pow, pow, pow. You never miss your target. Oh, we know that. From the jump tonight is not an apology. Tonight, I'm not asking for anybody's forgiveness. Tonight, it's not about a confession. Tonight is for clarity. I uh, And maybe contraceptives. Clarity and contraceptives so we no longer have anything to drag Giselle about. We can just drag her about a wrinkled neck and not about you out man. Contraceptives. Passa is still missing the point. You know, the Bible is supposed to open up your eyes, but Passa is still very sleep and sleeping on everything with a warm cooch, two legs, two titties, and a 30 inch side part lace front. I uh, have uh, for five seasons, I've never said anything about Potomac. For five seasons, not said a word in a sermon, in a post, in a subtweet, in a text. I average at least 56 interviews a year and in no condition and in no terms 
have I ever mentioned the Housewives of Potomac, good, bad, or ugly? Yeah. Never in five years, Passa. Now, I know you think we got a short memory that might work for the members of your congregation, but she wasn't dating you five years ago. That was not a storyline. See, remember, you had Sherman. You had a couple other dudes that came around and left, came around and left, tell her they love her, left the next day, introduce them to your daughters, leave the next day. She really couldn't keep a man. She loves being the pretty one in the relationship because she loves ugly niggas. So I, you are not relevant to her storyline five years ago. So it doesn't matter. You've never talked about it. You didn't really show up for her on the show either. So, I mean, we know you didn't talk about it. We know you wasn't a part of it. You live in her phone and apparently her imagination. And support. A couple of things um, that I wanted to share um, that I think prudent for our discussion today. That's how you know a nigga lying when he grabs his chest like this. Right, but right. just just listen to y'all man talk. Right when he do this, hey, you know, babe, I just want to let you know he lying, lying. I have uh, long since uh, not been an advocate uh, for uh, many reality television shows. Why? Because I don't think that it represents the best of who we are, <clears throat> uh, nor does it advance our progress, our maturity, and our brilliance. Neither does the church. Wait a minute, pass up. You want to talk about what what doesn't advance us? I mean, no, he's absolutely right about reality TV, but sir, neither does lying to people. Neither does teaching out of a book when you're not teaching all of the book. Neither does cherry picking verses to get money out of these women. Look, we know churches are what, 80 to 85 percent black? Mostly black women. He knows exactly what to say. He knows to wear them tight pants up underneath them lights and shoot up his crotch to, to show everybody what he's working with in the first two to three views. He knows exactly to do what he got to do to get that tax free money. Damn it. You want to talk about reality TV ain't advancing us? At least reality TV going to put a little money in your pocket. Church ain't doing nothing but taking it out of it. She, you know, Perlene can't pay her light bill, and you rolling around in a Maserati with seven baby mamas ain't worried about a lick of child support. Get the hell out of here. And get that shit off your sweater talking about I'm an African angel. No, you're a black devil. Embrace Pangea is a black-owned health and wellness brand that has solidified themselves as being able to take care of your yoni, but guess what? They do more than just service your yoni. Yes, as a matter of fact, Embrace Pangea has products to cover you from head to toe, inside and out, and in particular, let me tell you about a couple products that I personally use. Number one is the herbal tooth powder that is better than any toothpaste that you will get over the counter. It will get your teeth clean and help your teeth to maintain a natural white shade, and in addition to to that the advanced botanical mouthwash is something that we all should have in our medicine cabinet now when you look at a bottle like this with 25 potent herbs like echinacea golden cell don't laugh at me if i mispronounced that you know what i meant <laughs> we need these natural ingredients in our mouth rinses so that we can fight tooth decay gingivitis all of that plaque halitosis and overall poor hot oral hygiene okay so if you want to get a good clearance when you go to the dentist get you some embrace pangea and in addition to that make sure you use my code storm to get 10% off your order and check out today <laughs> you ain't what, what what African what African what see because if you were truly African all your women would be living under the same compound or under the same home See, y'all love, see, you, you got that Nick Cannon syndrome going on and I already know. See, y'all love to, you know, look at the African way of doing things, the, you know, the Afro-Muslim way of doing things and saying they got multiple women, they have multiple wives. They all live together. The man controls all, all their children are raised together. If you're going to do it, nigga, you got to do it right. So take all of that tithing money, build one big compound and put all your hoes and your children in one place. Now you're trying to run around the six or seven baby moms to see your hair and my kids. That's not how how it works, so that's not how any of this works. A bone of uh, contention uh, between uh, Giselle and I for years was about her participation in the show and how it is that I uh, did not support it. In uh, baby steps of uh, reconciliation, I agreed to be on it against my better judgment, against my wisdom, and even against my convictions. 
Oh. Is cheating against your religion? Since you're doing things against your wisdom and, and you know, your convictions, is, is cheating not against your religion? I just want to know, Pastor. Pardonably, regret participating. And I want you to know that I will never be on the Housewives of Potomac or anything in that franchise ever again. But I wanted you to know why. Sir, we're not going to miss you. You showed up for all the three episodes and you missed your, uh, you you went and got your feet and hands done instead of coming to see your kids. So, um, sir, I, I mean, you know, your, your own kids didn't want you to show up on the show. So I, we, sir, we're not going to miss you. You would just be another man that told Giselle that he loved her and then never came back. Um, I took a couple of days to be sober of thought and clear of mind. So I would not, in fact, operate in uh, emotionalism. Is the pastor drinking too? He said he took a couple of days to be sober, sober minded, sober thinking. Ain't you supposed to always be sober when you're preaching up out of that, out of that word, out of that book, pastor? Don't tell me what y'all think the pastor's drink of choice is. Let me know down below. He gives me Martell vibes. Now he an old school nigga. He gives me E and J. This is ENJ. This is MD2020. Yeah. Y'all don't know about the MD2020. That's cheap Viagra. You ain't heard it from me. But in sound judgment. So I want to tell you why you will never see me on the Housewives of Potomac again. We didn't see you before. We didn't see you during. And we don't care to see you after. Carry on. It has been a gross misrepresentation of my character my ministry, and my humanhood. There are a couple of things that have happened this season that require immediate redress. Many of you who are watching bombarded me uh, with uh, accusations of abandoning my family, not being there for my girls, for their photo shoot, as if I was just in Atlanta frolicking around you were. No, 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 no. So, I mean, he's going to explain it in a minute where he was, but you do frolic in Atlanta. I mean, that's that's a that's a fact. Why? That's a Fendi fact. Why are we why are we going to you don't get six or seven baby mamas while you out here just uh, preaching and going to work every day. You are frolicking. You are. Papa was a roller stone. Anywhere he put his collar was his home. That's literally you. That's you. And nobody abed nobody accused you of abandoning your daughters. Y'all, y'all, y'all been divorced 10, 11 years, and kids are barely in high school. So you ain't you you ain't lived in the house with them since they were small. They barely remember you. So we never accuse you of abandoning kids that don't even remember you in the first place. What we accuse you of was being an adulterer, a fornicator, a cheater, a tithe stealer. That's what we accuse you of. Pass. And of participating in willful neglect. The truth of the matter is, I was in South Africa. <laughs> I was in South Africa coming back for the photo shoot and had a delay. In Ain't they always in Africa? Stop blaming shit on Africa. Oh, yeah. Went for Germany for six hours. The producers knew it, the network knew it, and as a consequence, my flight did not land. In enough time. And none of that was mentioned. None of it was brokered. None of it was represented. All right, let's break that down. He says that he didn't miss the family photo shoot because he was frolicking in Atlanta, even though he got six or seven baby mama. So he's frolicking somewhere on somebody, including that baby that was just born in March of this year, which he is still not addressing, ain't going to address in this 21 minute damn video. But you said you was stuck in Germany after coming from Africa. OK, sounds believable until you remember this photo shoot had already theoretically been planned for weeks. Whenever you do a reality show and, and you, you they come up with these scenes, this stuff is planned weeks in advance. So you know you had a photo shoot to be, you know you had a scene to tape 
weeks in advance. So there is absolutely no way a reasonable person would schedule a photo shoot so close to a trip where they coming from out of town. And you ain't even gonna tell me you gonna travel from South Africa all the way up to Potomac and then even be uh, awake and, and lively enough to even come and tape and do a damn photo shoot. Cause there's this thing called what Leo, you know, the, the, the jet lag, the, you know, you know, you know, so once again, lies, lies, and more lies. Secondly, um, what happened on the Housewives of Potomac is that many of you misguidedly thought that it was in real time. It was, in fact, recorded a year ago in 2019. And so you saw uh, my children who uh, were not happy with me but you didn't have context. No, we had context. Why they all, see this generation gets me with that. They always act like when their kids are upset with them, their kids really don't have a valid reason to be upset with them. The kids, they, they, they don't know you like that. You don't come around like that. And they sick of seeing you hurt their mama. That's literally what them kids said. Them kids are smart, they not dumb. God. Oh. Is that first day of school, and this is the very first time in their entire lives that the first day of school I was not present to pick them up or to take them. Any of you who have teenagers understand the emotional roller coaster of teenage girls. You know what causes even more of an emotional roller coaster? Emotional roller coaster. Who sing that? Is that Vivian something? Let me know down below. You know what else causes the emotional roller coaster of a teenage girl or a teenage period? You know, when, when they daddy lying to their mama. When they mama trying to get back with their cheating daddy, but daddy's still cheating. Mama come home crying every day. You know, when mama ain't got nothing to do besides lick all up and through Robin's ass crap. You know. When mama's mean, because you know mama uh, uh, is mean when she ain't getting, you know, her regular peen appointments. Let's cut. A lot of y'all mamas out there watching this right now, me and your kids just yelled at your kids over nothing because your, your peen appointment didn't come through last night. Y'all already know what it is. Her daughters told her to her face, you mean when you ain't got no man. What y'all think that means? Your kids ain't tripping off you coming for the first day of school. They would have been mad the first day of school. They wouldn't have been mad for seasons. So consequence, I had just moved to Atlanta. And so it was adjustment for them and it was for me. They are absolutely daddy's girls. As a matter of oh. <laughs> fact, uh, they are here in Atlanta often and frequent. And more than their school, they wear new birth t-shirts and hoodies almost every day. Faithfully, even while they're in Maryland, they watch their father on Sunday morning in worship. I have a very healthy relationship with my children, which I value and which I absolutely don't take for granted. None of us ever attack that. None of nobody cares about that part. Your girls ain't talked about that part. Do you? Let's let's go through the lies. Once again, the book of lies of Jamal Bryant. If they was really as close as this man say they were, why do they act funny every time he come on the screen in a scene? They go out to dinner, they don't want to see him. Your dad's coming by the house, they don't want to see him. Mommy's going to go out a day with dad, they don't want her to do it. They don't want it. I'm not believing any of this. And I know Giselle put your ass up to this too. But she got to come better than that. Damn. The third thing that was uh, put out there pejoratively was uh, disparaging remarks made by my father-in-law, Mr. Curtis Graves who is 83 years of age. He's 83 years of age and unlike many, I was raised old school, that you never disrespect elders. 
You don't. You don't disrespect your elders. That's why I don't disrespect mine. <laughs> you don't disrespect your elders, Pastor. That's why I'm addressing you as Pastor. All right, Pastor. We, we, and we're just asking questions. But see, speaking of what we raised not to do, you know, in the black community, in the black church, it'd be really nice if, you know, we could raise our kids to, you know, be faithful and monogamous and never cheat on their spouses that they took vows with. So you want to give an elder all this respect, but you didn't give that much respect to the woman you took vows with under God. You read Deuteronomy, right, Pastor? Didn't they teach you that in seminary? I mean, I know this is a hustle for you, but you clearly, I, they don't tell me you Nick Cannon the Bible and just look at the footnotes. Tell me you read it through and through. Read this King James, whatever version you want. I got the Hebrew Israelite version over here too. You don't know nothing about that. Are you ready to up your financial game? Are you sick of being broke and want to learn money-making skills that can actually help you to survive any recession or dip in the economy? Copy, paste, get paid. I am already at $7,800 in just two weeks. Trudera is here for you. Now with Trudera Financial Education Services, you are going to learn how to trade for it. Our basic focus is to teach you when to buy in the market, when to sell in the market, and when to do nothing. Now, even though here at the Swim My Road Show, I cannot make any promises on what you can make, but I do want to let you guys know that in some instances, people are making $25,000, $5,000, even $10,000 in a week alone. So this is a company that's definitely worth checking out. We help people that never traded actually start seeing success. Our success rate is crazy. So why go give a university tens of thousands where you can invest just a little bit with them? and be well on your way to financial freedom and success. Check out www.tradera.today and you can be on your way to financial freedom. Hmm, interesting. Never disrespect your elders. Let's start by not disrespecting our spouses. Let's start there. Man. I honor him. He's an amazing man. He has had incredible accomplishments. And he has every right to feel protective over his daughter. I've been divorced for now 10 years, and he and I have not had a heart-to-heart, man-to-man conversation about me breaking the heart of his baby girl. Anybody who is married or been married understands that working with in-laws is a process and it is a journey. So that was, in fact, one of the very few times in 10 years that we have been in proximity. But I want on record uh, that I honor him. He's made tremendous strides in history. He is uh, my fraternity brother. Well, and I want my children to always know uh, that I honor their grandfather and Giselle's father. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's back up. See, he's referring to the same scene on Potomac when the daddy left the dinner with Giselle and Jamal and the kids and said, look, I can't do this shit no more. I don't want her back with him. He got six or seven baby mamas. He got this. He got that. They, why, why would she want to get back with that? Sir, in all of these book of lies that you said, you didn't say nothing that your father-in-law said was untrue. Because much like you just said, you can't disrespect your elders, you ain't going to lie on them either. Do I believe you or Giselle daddy? I believe Giselle daddy. I, I, I believe Pop. I Pop Pop. I believe Pop Pop. He told the truth, and you haven't been in proximity with him in ten years because he probably wanted to choke you out for doing his daughter the way that you did. Since you are a frat brother, right? And technically, since he is, you know, he would be like your senior. Technically, he could take you in the closet and paddle you. Do I have that wrong? Maybe I do. I don't know. I wasn't in no black fraternity, so I don't know. I wasn't one of the white ones, and you know, we don't talk that much after after college. Y'all tell y'all tell me how the black ones work. Do your singers do you do 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 your singers always kind? Are they always in a position to check you? Let me know. Who gonna check Jamal? We want to know. I uh. I'm sorry, pass it. Want to uh. Make sure I'm on the right page of my binder because uh, you can't bring me receipts 
if I got the cash register. <laughs> so uh, let, let me uh, press the cash register. <laughs> is Pastor trying to throw shade? Do is Pastor trying to throw holy? Is the holy whore trying to give us holy shade? Except Pastor, we know you have the cash register because you have everybody else's cash in your register, literally. Yes. I dated a young lady in New York. In case you all missed it, I've been divorced for 11 years. And single people date. Oh, so you was never in an actual relationship with Giselle then? See, that would be a little funny to me because, see, her, see, I know she didn't go over the whole storyline with you. She just gave you a portion of the check. Allegedly. See, in her storyline, you two were trying to you two were back together and like trying to make it work. But you saying you y'all you y'all were still just single and were just dating. So were you trying to make it work? Were you just dating? Like what was it? Who I'm get I'm getting confused, Pastor. When you date, sometimes it works and sometimes it did. In this instance, it did. Nothing immoral, illegal, or unethical took place. It uh, if you had sex with that woman before wedlock, that is immoral. Wait a minute, pass up. Wait a minute. A am I going to have to read the scripture? He said nothing immoral took place. No, it, it, it did. See, because see, the church loved to see. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going I'm to I'm read a scripture here. Fornication scripture. Because the pastor might have forgot. The pastor might have forgot. And I just want to remind him. I just want to remind him here. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms, the holy whore. <laughs> to provoke me to anger and you wonder why people mad wait a minute wait a minute matthew chapter 5 verse 32 but i say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife saving for the cause of fornication causes her to commit adultery and so and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery yeah because you know whenever you get divorced you ain't really spiritually divorced yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of y'all forgot that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um let's see what else what else what else what else? John chapter 8, uh, 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 verse 44, 41. Ye do the deeds of your father, the, of your father, Jim, uh, Passa, the holy the God, not your actual father. He was probably wrong. So that one. Okay. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Acts chapter 15, verse 20. But what we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood, the blood, the blood. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Last one, we're going to move on. Be filled with all unrighteousness, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Whispers, pass uh, You did something more, or are you gonna tell me you didn't have sex with that woman? Don't make me call her. It did not work out. There is some clarity that needs to happen. I'm not married. I'm not engaged. So some of you have uh, a strange relationship with language. You can't have a mistress while you're single. So I never had a mistress. As a consequence, she has never been to visit me in Atlanta, never been in New Bern, never been in my home, have never been in her home. Oh, so oh, so you screw her in hotels. Okay. Now, you would think that things um, just move forward and people move on. They don't. Um, so, if we're going to show text messages, let's show all the text messages. Let's show the text messages um, of uh, the young lady asking to fly to Atlanta for my installation. Show the text message where I said, no, it's not a good idea. You're going to show the text message, show all the text messages. 
were you asked to come down for Memorial Day? And I said, no, you can't come here. If you're gonna show the text messages, show the text messages where you complain because I didn't open the door for you to speak on the Word Network. Ooh. You're gonna show the text message, show all of them, how it is that you wanted me to hire you to be on staff. I told you you weren't qualified. Oh, and so Jen, he said you only qualified for this. Whoa, Pastor. So she thought that by sleeping with you, she would get a high position in the church. More money, more money, more money. And you told her, no, you ain't qualified for that. She ain't never been to your home in Atlanta. You ain't never been to hers. That literally sounds like a hole to me. Anyway, I brought in new staff members, three of them. Uh, my assistant pastor, Collins Lemons, my internet pastor, Kurt Vance Ross, and my emerging generations pastor, Kariana Turner. So if you're going to show the text message, show the text message from January 5th, where you sent me in text. Um, oh, I see you hired a young lady. You must be sleeping with her. To which I responded, no, I didn't even know her before I hired her. 56 people applied for the job and she emerged because she is competent and because she is capable. All right. Well, let's say this, Jamalsi, once again, you're telling on yourself, why would your the woman that you're dating that you've never been to her house and she's never been to yours, so you only go on dates and go to hotels? Okay. Why would she say, oh, you hired such and such, you must be sleeping with her? She wouldn't say that unless you had a history of doing it. So once again, these are the book of lies of Jamal. We're going to add this book to the damn Bible. We won't add it to the body. We won't add it to the word because this is nothing but a bunch of lies. And so for you to insinuate it uh, is fraudulent. You don't read the text messages. Uh, read the text messages where uh, you asked me to review your dissertation on black women's empowerment. I told you it needed a revision because it doesn't have depth. It doesn't have enough nuance and there is no creativity. Damn. You don't read the text. Read the text. How it is that uh, you sent this quote receipts to 27 periodicals and blogs hoping to sell a story. And of the 27 you sent it to, 25 dismissed it because they knew it had no merit, it had no weight. And so, because doors were not opening, because you're chasing clout and an opportunity to get on a stage that gift and integrity necessitate. You then sent it to the executive producers of Bravo. Sent it to the executive producers of Bravo, they didn't respond. So you sent it to every person in the cast. Your dissertation is on the empowerment of black women. So the question is, if you're empowering black women, why'd you send it to the entire cast and never send it to Giselle? You want to equip her and not break her or crucify her. And you thought something was awry. Then the responsible thing to do is to go to that woman. But you didn't do that. The responsible thing to do would have been to not be dating a hoe while you trying to make it work with your ex-wife. Here's the thing, too. Um, speaking of empowering black women, it would have been nice if Giselle just would have been nice to Monique from the very start. She is literally hating Monique from the moment that Monique said... I have four homes while she was trying to save up for her dilapidated one. And so I'm just trying to figure out this whole empowerment. They love to talk about empowering black women and none of them do. How do you empower black women besides taking, well, taking a coochie and taking a currency and a coin? Like how, how are you empowering them? The black community still ain't got no better. You know, if I was to talk to some of your church members, a lot of your church members, I'm sure they still struggling. I mean, we are in the COVID you know, how many bills have been paid? How many mortgages have been paid? How many houses have been saved? How many cars have been saved? We want to know. We want to know. Pass. Uh, it's okay. Um, what you uh, didn't uh, say in uh, passing out this information is that uh, you and your sister are starting a magazine, uh, very fledgling, no circulation. 
poor editing. And so my core in answering you uh, about where I am and what I am doing is not as a friend, but because I didn't want it in publication and I didn't trust it obviously wisely uh, that it wouldn't be used otherwise because every past had a demand for something else. No. The only person uh, who bought into it uh, was Monique. So let's uh, go to that. Yamaya's Gift is a brand that specializes in medicinal herbs and all natural supplements to help alleviate a lot of conditions that Americans suffer from, okay? Now, Yamaya's Gift got products to help you with that hypertension, to help speed up that weight loss, get rid of them fibroids, as well as help alleviate the symptoms of that diabetes. Oh yeah, that sugar, that sugar is real bad. So now with Yamaya's Gift, you get a lot of gifts, but the best gift that anyone could ever give you is the ability to heal thyself from the inside out with products like elderberry syrup to help keep that immunity in check because we all fighting Miss Rona. We all trying to windmill her ass up out of her lives. But one of my personal favorites, as a matter of fact, two of my personal favorite products with Yamaya's gift is the all natural honey and the tea that's for men. And the reason why I like those products is because if you are somebody with a low sex drive and you need a boost in the bedroom and if you are ready to get brian pompered lexington steeled all night long then just put some of that in your man's cup and you will be on your way to a happier healthy marriage all right now place your orders today whether you need your immunity taken care of you're trying to lose some weight you're trying to get rid of that sugar the diabetes or you're just trying to bust a nut okay order her shit at www.yamayasgift.com Oh, here she is. Uh, Monique um, Samuels, I've never met. Um, never shook her hand. Never been in the room with her. Hmm. And yet, she's assassinated my character with high level of fear, of anger and hostility. A man she's never met. Now, um, I've got to address this. Um, because on national, international television, you've labeled me a holy whore. <laughs> a holy whore. Um, and so I need to give some address to that. Uh, I'm not sleeping with any woman in my church. And I have no babies in my church. And I have no inappropriate relationship with any woman in my church. Y'all believe that? Do y'all believe that? Because Giselle daddy say different. Giselle daddy say different. Now, see, you got to read between the lines. People read in between the lines. All right. He says, I'm not sleeping with nobody in my church. Which church? Because you was up in Baltimore. Now you down here in Atlanta. They say you ran out of Baltimore because you had made so many babies in the church. So are you just talking about new birth? Ain't no new births and new birth. You know, I mean, you took over for Eddie Strong. So we just, we, we already know how that church get down. I ain't going in there. I look. A lot of these pastors are gonna lead y'all right to the to, right to the pits of hell, following them, thinking you following God. God, God is up there, not in the church. Oh, anyway, anyway. But I'm 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 just saying. Number two, who says you need to get a girl pregnant and then force her to leave the church? Everybody ain't lying. Or is he gonna tell me he has not had sex in the last ten to eleven years? Well, see, we would know that's not true because his own marriage broke up due to infidelity. Come on now, do y'all come on now? Um, and always remember, there ain't a whole lot of prostitutes that do go to church. Just saying. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading my own writing. Oh, believe in your own bullshit. Um, oh, here it is. Um, so I, I understand um, what the hostility was about and why the redirect of attention. Uh, was on me. The redirect of attention on me. Uh, you teamed up with your best friend, who rest in peace has gone on to be with the Lord, and uh, generated a story um, because you wanted to redirect because uh, you thought a story was getting ready to break that your baby is from your trainer. And that's what got your husband upset because he thought Giselle leaked. I want to tell you, Monique and Chris, 
it is not Giselle who leaked that, but uh, only your best friend, Gigi. Uh, we, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, it became uh, hostile and angry, and it was misdirected rage. Misdirected rage um, because uh, you, you live in a house with a man who has anger management, uh, who doesn't mind uh, expressing volatile behavior. Oh. And everything that I'm saying tonight is um, not conjecture. Uh, this is not murder. Uh, this is uh, self-defense. Oh. Uh, and so on Sunday, for the first time in five years, I'm inviting my audience to watch the reunion, Housewives of Potomac, where you will see Monique's husband try to attack my wife, my ex-wife, and Robin. And uh, security had to be called, and he had to be subdued. And I'm very concerned. Um, Monique, um, you all have uh, my phone number, as you expressed on the show, um, but I had you all's address. Oh. And uh, because of grace, uh, I didn't uh, respond to that. Um, Chris. You had the address. Was you trying to pull up? <laughs> Don't tell me the, the pastor, a.k.a. the holy whore. Got holy hands. Was he finna lay hand? I I don't know if you want another Chris. That's all I that's all I'm gonna say. I ain't even gonna lie. If I was Candace's husband, I would let her know. If Chris, if Chris Samuels come after you, you just gonna have to get your ass whooped. Cause that man 350 pounds. I'm not gonna fight him. Sorry, I'm just not. I'm just not. Come on, Pastor. He said I was gonna throw them holy hands. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, that's hilarious. Um, you got to. You got to take care of CTE. <gasps> yeah. Some of your former uh, teammates contacted me. They're concerned. Said, Jamal, please don't respond um, because CT is a progressive degenerative disease it's from a history of uh, trauma to the brain. Uh, and so just last week, uh, you had an outbreak again uh, verbally assaulting a black woman in Safeway. You nope. have the footage of that, but uh, I'm not going to hear that. But I'm asking you to please get help. Uh, I've tracked down your pastor, so all of what I'm saying is involved, so that your pastor can uh, help you uh, get the help uh, that is needed and that is necessary. Uh, none of this um, really ne necessitated happening. I've not bothered any of you. Not said anything disparaging against any of you. I've not attacked any of you. Um, but I thought it was necessary for a couple of reasons. Um, I thought it was necessary because of the failures of my past, it made the accusations of the present believable. Anyway, that's where I'm going to stop that because then he turns the music up loud after that. But look, I just got to say this at the end of the day. Do I have any sympathy for him or Giselle? No, I do not. Giselle got everything that she deserved on every reunion stage. When you are going to be the bone carrier, when you are going to be the one to call everybody out and their mistakes and what they do in their marriage, you got to be able to take it for yours. Now, Pastor, I do got to say this. In all of Monique's binder, he was really not the one being attacked. She was simply using the fact that your relationship with Giselle is fake and it's for a storyline, the same thing that the bloggers, us bloggers, have been saying for months. All right. We have been saying that you had a baby as recently of this year. We have been saying that there are several baby mamas out there that you must pay very well to keep out of the child support system. I'm, I'm just saying. Like, do you know how much money you got to pay to keep your baby mama from going and filing child support on you, especially when there's multiple babies and you ain't really got the time to be there for the one that you make with her anyway? It's a lot. But I say all of that to say this. Giselle got everything that she deserves and no book of lies that you have is going to be able to save her. I'm just saying, because that holy book can't even save you from cheating and from committing, you know, fornication, adultery, you know, you know, Pastor, you know. And so Giselle got everything that she deserved up there on that stage. It was nothing she could say. She made fun of Karen with her tax stuff. She, 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 she talked about everybody. And when you talk about everybody, people are going to talk about you, too. It's just the way it goes. Your, your, your ex-wife has been the mean girl from the start. And finally, the main girl that she's been mean girling against 
hit back at her ass and hit back harder than her fist ever could. See, you could throw hands with somebody and that stuff gonna heal. Like Candace is that patch that was torn out the, the, the top of her head. That will eventually grow back. By the way, Candace, I don't know why in the hell your crazy ass didn't go and immediately drop a weird glue line. They say you sell wigs. You should have been posting that shit like crazy. It would have sold because even with the strongest of hands, your wig will stay on. Like you should have flipped that, but you just, you, you was too busy crying with a perfectly folded Kleenex that never is wet with any tears. It just doesn't make sense. However, keep riding your brown penis in peace and live your life. Now, I'm going to say this. At the end of the day, one thing Jamal do got right. I'm sorry, Pastor. One thing Pastor got right. Monique's anger was completely misdirected. So, see, the one she should have slapped the hell out of was Giselle. Because if you go back and look at that fight, there is a hand that pushes Monique, that pretty much pushes her into pulling Candace's hair. And that hand was Giselle's. That was actually the match that started that fight. Had it not been for that shove, when you got two intoxicated people going at it and are not really conscious of their surroundings and they get a shove and they already kind of playing with each other and then it's just on their pop. Giselle is the cause of it. I hope we see that at the reunion. That's all I wanted to come on and say today. I'm not going to hold y'all for too long. We have not listened to Jamal Bryan's Book of Lies. And uh, in all of it, it was a bunch of lies, all right? So like, comment, subscribe, share if you care, and I will catch you guys.